ladies and gents, let's have a quick look at my electronic kit. Now I've upgraded this a little bit and I'm going to show you some things that are really quite interesting. So this video is titled Homemade Kilowatt Hour Meter. Well this is a kilowatt hour meter and I'm going to show you how it's been made. So this is the device. Now perhaps not much to look at but there are three main components here. First is this. This is a uh, the 225 VA 18 volt encapsulated toroid or transformer that we saw in the last video. We have this device which is a 100 amp current transformer and I've spliced it in to this extension lead. There you go, there's extension lead and I've simply spliced it in. Now you'll notice that the live and neutral wires are passing through the core. That is deliberate. They're passing in opposite directions in order to get two turns on the core. Uh, and it's simply a practical issue. I didn't want to have to cut the cable and wrap the live round twice just to keep it symmetrical. It's ballasted with this coil of wire here. And there are some potential leads coming off here which disappear off into uh, a wire that's spliced into the input of my sound card. So, and in here is the voltage divider for the uh, potential transformer. So, 18 volts goes in here, goes in there, it's divided by 50, I think I've changed the circuits, it's divided by 50 to about 400 millivolts off to the sound card. This thing here um, yields a voltage of about 100 to 200 millivolts at about 10 amps load. So that then runs off to the sound card and it's plugged into the line input. And there's the PC here, and it's running the analysis software. So here we go. Quick look there is uh, the display 234 volts, 1 amp, 241 watts, power factor 94% lagging, and the, you can see the energy ticking up 48, 49 kilojoules frequency there. Uh, we've got a number of displays there, so frequency at the top here, voltage, voltage harmonics. Ah, now this is this is embarrassing. You'll notice here that the harmonics run from about 0 to about 3%. Um, we'll come back to that in a minute. Vectorscope display, we've seen that before. Flicker display, I haven't actually done a proper video of this, but we'll do that later. Spectrum display, waveform display. Ah, yes, um, I have a little apology to make. To all those guys, such as uh, Narcoti, um, who have uh, commented on my previous videos, well, um, oops, yes, I made an unfortunate mistake, um, and this in fact is the power waveform. The problem was incorrect connection of the transformer to the sound card. It turns out that I used a four-ring jack, so three inputs to a jack plug. Well it turns out that the video connection which I hadn't used actually is used on my sound card as the ground so in fact the signals were ungrounded and were capacitively coupled which is why they looked absolutely bloody horrendous. Um, here is the current information, here we go, so um, I've no idea what that is, I think it's because um, so this is the current here, I've no idea what the spike is, I think it's probably because I turned a bulb on and off or something, no idea. Um, other than that, I, if it's not that, then it's uh, probably some uh, stray movement in the wires which are not particularly securely connected. So as you can see here, power here, 250 watts, fairly stable, current about 1.1 amps, power factor hovering around 0.94%, no, sorry 94%, and there's the current waveform harmonics in the current. And that's mainly due to the presence of uh, my high intensity discharge lamp that I've been illuminating this room with. Let's, let's unplug it and then we'll take another look at the, uh, the uh, current. So we've now just got a single 60 watt bulb plugged in. A little bit dim. You can see immediately that the uh, harmonic distortion has dropped right off current has dropped off and is a nice sine wave, power factors jumped up to 0.98, current drop, power drop, reading currently about 56 watts. Um, this is K 
calibrated purely on the basis that that's a 60 watt bulb. No idea if it's accurate or not. Um, voltage waveform we've seen. That's the uh, voltage spectrum there, I think. Actually, it looks awfully like the current spectrum. I think there's probably a bug in the program. Okay, so here we go. Um, I'll leave it at this, and then we'll do a quick vid of the high-intensity discharge lamp warming up, because it is actually quite interesting. Okay, so this is the metal halide high-intensity discharge lamp, as you can see. Fairly straightforward, double-ended tube lamp. 150 watts. This is actually a very nice lamp. It's a very nice daylight simulation bulb, which is fabulous in winter. Um, the lamp itself, the, the, the sorry, the luminaire or the enclosure itself, I got off eBay. It cost two quid. Um, the, the bulb itself was very expensive. That also was from eBay. I got it from a fish shop on eBay. It's about 30 quid. Beautiful lamp. Highest um, color rendering index of any. Uh, metal halide bulb, about 97%, very good. So here we go, let's plug it in, but first let's just have a quick look at the display. So I've been playing around a bit with some filament lamp bulbs, you can see the, the current flickering about up and down there, power down there, currently we're just running a single 40 watt bulb, power's hovering around 40 watts there, 39.9 it says, and the energy is slowly clocking up. So let's plug in the metal halide. And off it goes. There you go. It's made its funny grunting noise. And off it goes. Now let's have a look at the current. As you can see, big, big spike. And a big spike in power. Currently using about 160 watts. So about 120 for the lamp and about 40 for the filament lamp. And you can see the power just sort of creeping up there, current staying relatively stable. If we go to this graph here where we've got power factor at the top, you can see power factor of 1 for the filament bulbs, a bit of noise here, we plug in and it starts off at about 0.65 and gradually heads up and stabilises at around. 0.85, 0 0.9. Very nice. There's the current waveform for the metal halide. Very rich in harmonics. And actually, this this waveform is actually very interesting because it reflects partly the non-linearity of the bulb, but also the, the the presence of the power factor correction capacitor in the in the lamp enclosure. In fact, look, you can see as the lamp's warming up and the current is rising the power factor is coming up nicely. That's pretty nice, good. Coming up to over 0.9 now. Let's go back to um, current and power. So power just creeping up slightly. Now running at about 230 watts power, which is about 180, 190 watts to the lamp enclosure, which is about its normal power uh, consumption. You can see the power factor is more or less plateaued off at about 0.93, and the harmonic content of the um, current waveform, as you can see, little bits of noise here and there. Actually, that's because the bulb has a slightly dodgy filament and it keeps uh, arcing. But uh, as you can see, more or less, very little harmonic distortion, equivalent essentially to the. Um, distortion in the voltage waveform, but as you can see, once we switch on the metal halide, lots and lots of harmonic distortion, we get a waveform distortion of about 24%, and that's actually mainly due to the capacitor um, taking, drawing very high harmonic currents. So there we go. All information about halide, nonlinear currents, capacitors, power factor correction, all in one. We'll post some more videos when I've got some more interesting devices to measure. Have a nice night.